Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Outlanders. We're on to episode 8 I believe and we're starting things off in what we hope will become the shopping district. Now we do have a little bit of loading areas behind me and a creeper behind me. Hopefully he's noticed me. I'm going to have to quickly turn around and fight him off. Where did he go? There he is. Let's fight him off. Anyway, so you might note that there isn't a shopping district portal around here. So the first job we have today is to build one. And I'm thinking somewhere right around the middle. So somewhere around here should do perfectly. So let's get it in. And then we're going to have to hop into the nether and find the exact coordinates in the nether as well. Two, three, three, three and boom. That leaves us ten to build the other portal. So let's just take the note of the coordinates. It's 1300, 1500. Now, thankfully, the tunnel isn't going to be too far away from the rest of the area. Down here, we've got our base, and over this way, we've got the way, one of the ways to spawn. I've also dug up this way a little bit, but what, one of the things we do need to do is bridge up a little bit. Now, we're at roughly the right uh, Z axis, but we need to get to around 162 on the... Z on the X axis, so we need to be very careful here because I do not have feather falling. And we need to, and thankfully it's just a little bit further out here. So if I'm right, the portal goes right here. So if we just build this here, this here, and slowly build up the rest around it, we should be okay. So let's light this thing up and then and build a wall around it so we're not making people fall off. And we should be okay to get started on building this portal into the next, into the shopping district. And here you go. Let's hope this links up properly. And here we are. Yes, it linked up perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back to our base and get a few material, the materials that we're going to do to get our first thing built in this area. Now between episodes we've been doing a lot of work, we've been doing quite a bit of AFK fishing and as you can see we've got ourselves a lot of books. Okay, so this chest down here, we've got quite a number of books. So what we want to do is start making a profit on them. Now I've had the idea of, going, of building myself a giant bookcase shop. So something like these books over here. So for that I'm going to need some concrete I think would be the best as well as some wood, oak wood, we'll get that at the shopping district, and just and various colours. We're going to need blue, green, red, white in the looks, and cyan. And that means cactus. Okay, so that means I'm going to need a furnace over there, I think, and a few other things. So let's collect up the things we'll need and head over to the shopping district. Okay, so we've got our place that we're going to build the new shop, and I'm thinking it's going to be an exact replica of this. So we want, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 across, uh, 16 strong, 16 wide, I should say, blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, I think that is. And we want the same this way. Hopefully there's enough room. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, okay, hmm, maybe that wasn't the best plan. Let's start again. Now the question is exactly how do I do this? Because if we're looking at this, we've got different texture colors. We've got a darker blue here and a lighter blue here. Now I'm thinking I could douse this with a bit of water or a water bucket, which I don't have on me, so I'm gonna have to use water sources. But if I make a couple of these blue or hardened concrete, it should be a little bit darker and should be give the slight texture differences that I'm looking for, slight color differences I'm looking for. So where does the blue one go? That one, that is the fourth book. So if I go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, I think it was, and that one, two, one, two three. So one more, and we should be about right for this. And then there's a dark concrete or something at the top, just one block. And we want to do something similar on this side, just two like concrete powder. And then the rest are concrete, which we need to, a couple of those. So that's the general idea. So hopefully we can get this done pretty quickly. 
and we can show off exactly what we've got in here. And there we go, there's the first layer. I'm not entirely certain if I wanted to do the second layer, but having a look at it, it's pretty reasonable. Although from the close-up, it looks just like a hodgepodge of lots and lots of different colors. So if I go a fair way away, it begins to look a lot better. You can see there, you can really see the individual books and bookcases rather than just the individual colors that you can close up. It looks a lot more like the bookcase that we know. So looking at that, I'm not still certain if I want to do the top layer because it is going to be a lot more resources and a lot more checking to see if I've got it right. So that is a consideration. After a bit of consideration, I've decided to leave it just at the one story for now because we're not going to actually be building our store inside the bookshelves, but we're going to be building it completely underground and that's going to present a little bit of a logistical hurdle because of course we're going to have to mine it all out and we're going to have to light it all up. Not that we're going to have, not that we'd have to not do the same if it were above ground, it just means a little bit of mining. So I need to first plan out exactly how big I want this thing to be, as well as get myself a shovel so the dirt gets away a little bit quicker. I reckon that's a pretty good size for the, for the building. Now, I have gone with lime green, concrete, lime green concrete powder. That's a bit of a tongue twister. On the bottom, I want it to remain lime green because I think it just gives off a little bit of a little bit of a different feel to this and brightens up the room because of color contrast. Because what I'm thinking of doing is filling this entire bit, all the four here, the I think it's ten on this side, all the back wall, and all here and here every single wall with bookshelves and that's going to be mighty expensive so I'm going to have to go back to my main base and get myself some leather and some lots and lots and lots of paper and of course lots of wood and if you're looking in my inventory I uh, am a little bit full at the moment so I might need to dump off a couple of items so I can pick up these so I can pick up these shulkers and transport it back to my base ready for transport what do I not what do I not need? I don't really need the shovel, and I don't really need, let's see, this shovel, or the glowstone powder. So that, hopefully those two don't despawn, they probably will, but let's get back to the base and pick up some bookshelves. And after a little bit of leather gathering, I've got myself 16 books and 610 bookshelves, which is not going to be enough. I might need to rethink this entire plan of doing bookshelves everywhere. That might not be the best idea, and especially since it's rather expensive, I don't have any I don't have any leather left, I think. And that means I'm going to have to go killing a lot of uh, cows. Yeah, it's just a whole lot of problems at the moment. But never fear, we are going to soldier through and get this project done. Now, as you know, I don't have quite enough bookshelves, but I have had an idea on how to ch how to come up with a better solution for that. That's not going to use quite as many bookshelves. We are still short a few, but we are going to have need to get a couple more. But if we go like this, so we can put the bookshelves like so, and put one like that. No, sorry, not like that. Like that, and then we can have chests. Uh, chests around here and don't have quite enough well I don't have any chests on me at the moment but we can do something like this or we can put the bookshelves double and have only one line of chests I'm thinking this way because it'll be slightly I could get more storage room basically so this way it should be a little bit better so stop making mistakes and there we go so let's put this wood in put in and stop making the same silly mistake ever over and over there we go finally and we can finish this off soon I think now one of the things I also have to consider is what I'm going to put behind the chest because they're just going to be here and I probably should replace this bit as well with lime green concrete if I can find get more what I, sh what I also should decide is what goes behind the chest, as I just said. So what I'm thinking at the moment is probably dirt, because that's nice and cheap, and it doesn't look it doesn't look too bad, I guess. Uh, why is there a lime green concrete there? So that is one of the considerations. I'll have a look and see what it looks like, and then we'll see if that's an adequate solution. And I suppose you can put this as one of my first silly billy moments. I've just decided, just counted up a bit, and we've got one, two, three, four, five spots, and we've got five and a half. And 
we don't want five and a half, we want exact numbers. So instead of having six here, I'm going to go with five and pull this wall back in a little bit. I think that would be a better solution. And this way, I also get a bit of lime green concrete powder, which I can't pick up. What do I not need? I don't need the glowstone powder. So I can therefore use re or re reuse some of this here and around the edge. I think that would be the best solution for now. I can't believe I've messed this up again. In placing these things, I should have realized that if I was going to have four here and four here and a three wide entrance or a five wide entrance, it does mean that this back wall is going to have an uneven number of chests, which is annoying to say the least. But I think I've got a way to do it. I just need to put a pillar in the middle here, which means get rid of this block here and get rid of this thing here. And then if I have some kind of log, I can put it in the middle and that should suit it quite nicely. That's actually a good fix, a nice quick fix for this solution, for this problem. I'm also experimenting a little with the lighting and I've got just this 12 shroom lights to go, or 12 shroom lights on me. Now I'm thinking, because this isn't quite enough, you can still see a few dark spots, specifically right under here and right under here. Now my problem is that this is a four by four, or this is an even numbered thing, so I can't really put things in the middle. However, if I was to push these one more block in and then put shroom lights here, would that make a major difference? So let's let's move these over. This is a little bit slow, but not that needed. So if I put that there, put this over here, can I get that thing? No, I can't. Shroom right there, thing more bob there. And you've still got a bit of a problem here. We'll need to put the chests in to replicate what it is actually going to look like. And hmm, there's still a bit of a dark spot here, but I don't think mobs can spawn. It's certainly different, I think. There's still a little bit of a problem with it, but we may have to experiment a little bit more to figure out if we can get rid of these dark spots entirely. And here we go, I did work out the lighting, even though there's still a couple of dark spots here, 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 and here. Although I can't really work that out unless I cover the entire thing with lights, which is not something I want to do. I've also decided to replace these dirt pillars in the corners with uh, birch, as well as these things here. I think it gives just a little bit more of a transition into the building itself. The dirt behind it, I'm still not 100% sold on it, but I think it's okay, and the rest of the build looks pretty good. So if we're just standing right here, it looks to me pretty attractive and well bright, well lit and bright and everything. So now what we need to do is start moving those hundreds of books, well maybe not hundreds, but tens of books across to this thing and start sorting them out. One of the things I do want to do is make sure that I sort out these books into somewhat good categories. So I've got the four pieces of armor, I've got the shovel, a pickaxe, the bow, the sword, the trident, that's nine different things. I think there's a few more I could do. I could do a fishing rod, if there's a spare one around here, which is not enchanted, and preferably I'd, not, not, I'd like to not have to make a new one. A hoe, I suppose, that can be, that generally doesn't need normal stuff, there's a sword in there. Here else? a pickaxe, I think I've got one already, yes. Why not have two? Doesn't look like I've got any spare fishing rods, although that's where my rockets went. I've been missing them for a fair while. So it looks like I'm going to have to make a new one just in case. So there we go, that's a fishing rod. And if I look at these things, I got pretty much all the iron things, all the material that I need, I think. So let's go over to the shopping district and start setting up this shop. Well, it took quite a while, but I think I've managed to sort every single one of these books. There was, well, 27 times 3, whatever that is. That is 81, if my math is correct. So the general idea is that each of these holds several different items. So a lot across the board, you've got Aqua Affinity, you've got, you've got Respiration here, and more Respiration there, which is a little bit interesting. Maybe I might need to rearrange some of those. But got respiration there, then over here you've got various types of protection, in this one we've got various types of boot enchantments and so around across the board. Now I don't think I've got every single book possible, 
but I have tried to sort it out as much as possible and have multiples across the board except for piercing. They only seem to be one of those. And the same with the swords, there used to be a lot more of them. I don't have a lot, I don't have any looting, oh wait, there's looting there, this one's knockback. This, and unfortunately, <laughs> I did, unfortunately both the, wait a minute, that's not right. I've got fortune, I got knockback there, which should be up there, whoops. And I, then I've got smite on this one, which should be here. But that's also got fortune. Yeah, you can see I'm just rearranging a little bit more still because I didn't have any many fortune books here, which I think I should have. So I've got three silk touches, three fortunes. Not sure what I wanted on the axe. And that's it, I think. So let's take this stuff up. And then we need to decide on prices, which I didn't do before. It did take me a little while to work out the, an appropriate price for each of the books, although I'm thinking I'm probably charging just a little bit too much. The reason why I'm going with four diamonds is because some of these do carry multiple enchantments, like this one and this one. These are all just just random chance from the fishing. So I think four per four per book is probably a fair price, although when people start getting their... their what do you call them, the trading rooms set up, I probably will reduce, or I might stock up this thing and be a little bit more organized. Now, one of the things that did sort of surprise me is that I'm not too far away from the shopping district. If I just keep making the x-axis, the x-axis number smaller, or go upwards towards, the, towards x, you can see that my new base is somewhere over here, and we'll get to that later. So I'm actually not that far away, which is good. It's probably about 10 rockets, which is more than I'd like. But it's a really, really quicker. It's quicker than going through the nether. Now, one thing that has happened off camera, as you can probably see from the two pickaxes pick I've got in my inventory, is that I've been doing quite a bit of work mining this thing. As, and as we come into a gentle drift in, you can see the monument is completely gone. This took quite literally days of work. It was not fun, but I have to have to say a good big thank you to once again Mira and B-Boy and I think a bit of Gamer who all helped in destroying this thing. So we've got quite a few plans for this place, not first of which is the making of the actual Guardian thing. Now you can see I've marked up the 25 spawning spots. Well, they, there's not, they, it's not the exact spawning spots. They are a couple of blocks below what I've marked, but these are the things, these are the exact spots above where they're supposed to spawn, so I guess that's something. So, in some point we're going to work out how we're going to get this done, because I don't want to do it like we did last season and send them all to the nether and make the nether all laggy and all that. What we want is for this to all drain, preferably into a center point, maybe not exactly here, but it will drain to a certain point and we will be able to put it into auto kill with probably magma box and lava and all that or we will do a manual kill where we can get our experience from all the many many drops we're going to get. Now the last thing we we'll want to do is make a little bit more of a direct path to the shopping district so if you're coming up here this is my portal so coming along here which is, which this was faster which is exactly why I'm going to do my thing but if we're coming along here we took a right and we're coming along this path and then we pretty much have to do a u-turn and backtrack the way we were so what, what i want to do is from around here or near my portal i want to do a direct staircase downwards which i think would be beneficial so i just need to work out the exact coordinate so this one is along y equals 70 or z equals 70 i should say and at y equals 78 and then i need to work out the same on the other one so it was y equals 70 i think so y equals 70 is past, so we need to go, so if we're going to build the staircase, it needs to go this way. And this is y, and y equals 94, so we need to go 20 blocks up, I think, and 20 blocks forward. So hopefully this works, and if it doesn't, well, I'm going to be a little bit annoyed, but hopefully it does. And here we have it. It took quite a bit of time because right around here is open air, but 
I had quite a few number of close calls as well, but as you can see, I didn't manage to die for the first time in a while. I think this is the first time in about four episodes I haven't died during the episode, so that is quite a bit. Now, obviously there's quite a bit of confusing tunnels here, and so I've decided to put a few signs around. So if we go this way, we're back up to Robbie, and we have to go downstairs, so it's not really recommended. Now, obviously if we go this way now, we've got towards Lobo and Storm and the shopping district, which is straight at the end. And of course, which one I didn't put in was B-Boy, who I think B-Boy and Mirror go down this way. So overall, the nether is starting to get a little bit more navigable, but it is quite a bit messy. There's quite a few tunnels. You can see this one goes off to Storm and the uh, spawn point, and this one goes to the shops are just all over the place. So one of these days, hopefully we're going to be sorting out the nether and blasting quite a bit away so we can set up nether, nether hub or hubs. I'm not entirely certain what the plan is yet. So with that, I think it's nearly time to end. In fact, yes, that is the 20 minute mark. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.